everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com and it is time for our next Saturday with Stacy YouTube class number 401. Do I have a list of, oh wait a minute, can you see four, now we are over 400 YouTubes. <laughs> I have a list of winner winner chicken dinners for you that, well, is eight people long. That's because last week for our YouTube number 400, we allowed you to decide how to divvy up $400 worth of gift cards and our random picker, our software picked the, the winner winner and what they chose is what we did. So we have eight winners who are going to receive a $50 gift card. In fact, it's already in their online account to spend. That is seriously a wahoo could chew. Now, today's class, today's class, I think I might have overdone it. It is definitely chock full. I'm almost not even sure where to start, but I have got marabou crayons for you in a way you might not have thought to use them. I have got fine tech product for you that is so beautiful. I've got GG stickers and woodware stamps and just a ton of fabulous manufacturers and fabulous product. But the good thing about our classes is that chances are you either already own this product, you have something very similar to this product, or your friends do, and you can start playing right away. Yes, there might be a thing or two that I have that you haven't seen before and you really want, and that's wonderful. But the idea is to take an ad to your technique repertoire with, like I said, with Marabou crayons or, or peel off stickers. Really, Stacy, you're doing peel off stickers again? I am, but wait. <laughs> Just when you thought. <laughs> Think again. <laughs> so, so I have a list of winner winner chicken dinners to do. I'm going to do that list. I'm going to read a joke or two because I have approved all the comments. You couldn't see the comments for the whole week because I didn't want anybody just cutting and pasting a different, you know, a joke over there. So now all the jokes are up. There was over, I think over 700 comments. So have fun reading them. I sure did. Some of them were so hokey. It was awesome. It was really, really awesome. <laughs> So, in fact, one of them was, one of them was, I kept, I kept wondering why the Frisbee kept getting closer and closer to me. And then it hit me. You get it? Kept getting closer and closer and then it hit me. <laughs> I know. And there was one about, what did the, what did the left eye say to the right side? I don't know, but there's something smelly between us. <laughs> Okay, so if you need a laugh, if you ever need a laugh, just jot down YouTube number 400 and read the comments. I don't care if it's three years from now, read the comments because you can't help but smile. I wanna give you an update on the warehouse sale. We're just trudging through people. I know it's a whole lot longer than we, than, than anybody had expected, but who had expected what had happened in 2020 and 2021? You know, we just trudge through and we just do the very best we can. <laughs> and, and I'm hoping that that's good enough for the majority of you. I know some of you, it's not good enough. Trust me, we've gotten your emails and your phone calls. Thank you. <laughs> but for the rest of you, bless your pee picking heart for just going with us and doing the understanding that everybody is doing the best they can. Everybody. I mean, I drove, my, my, my two sons were in a car accident. They're okay. But the car ultimately was totaled. They thought they were gonna fix it and they totaled it out. And we just got the insurance check and we've been looking for a old used car for Michael Jr. And you go to the car lots and there's like no cars there. Nothing, gone. there's just no cars because, well, with everything that's happening, they haven't been able to get cars into production. Pieces that are needed to make the cars aren't able to be produced right now. It's crazy. I have a friend who bought bedroom furniture nine months ago. Nine months ago? Nine months ago. And she's still waiting for her bedroom furniture. We all just need to find a little bit of grace and a little bit of understanding for everybody. And I am so appreciative for everyone who sends us a card or a nice email. Bless you, really, bless you. You make my heart so happy. Now, 
the warehouse sale. I digressed so fast. It was like squirrel or something pretty shiny. So the warehouse sale. All of the orders that have been paid for from day one are upstairs. All of them. If you placed your order on the opening day of the warehouse sale, the first day, and I believe, and it, this only applies to people who place their order during the warehouse sale. If you didn't place your order last year and get a dollar die, or a $19.99 die for $1.99 or $7 stamp for 50 cents, then this doesn't apply to you. But if you did and you were on the first day and you've paid for your order, you have your order ha is either awaiting fulfillment, it's being fulfilled, it's awaiting quality control, it's been quality controlled, it's awaiting shipping, or it's been shipped and you already have it or it's on its way to you. The last order number on day one is 21163. 211 two six three two one one two six three so if you are two one one two six four and you were on day one we need you to pay for your order i don't know if that is the case <laughs> two one one two six four may be on the very next day i don't know but if you haven't paid for your order i can't ship it until it's paid for so we would greatly appreciate and if you could give us a call we'll take a credit card over the phone no problem so i'm just excited that all of day one is up now you have to know that we started at 209 i don't know 100 or something like that and we are at 211 that's a lot of orders in between that we just keep pushing out day two is not as big as day one and it's big but it's not as big as day one and then the subsequent days get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. I mean, there'll be times where we'll be able to ship out three days all on the same day because there's just not that many orders. And then the last day gets big again. So if you are day two, if you placed your order day two and you are a pay later, look for your PayPal invoice. You don't have to pay via PayPal. There's a link at the bottom of that email from PayPal that says you can pay with any credit card you want, whatever makes your heart happy, or you're welcome to call us at the store Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Sunny California time. 6 p.m. is 9 p.m. in New York. And 10 a.m. in the morning is uh, 10, 11, 12, 1 p.m. In, in New York. So remember, there may be a time difference if we're not picking up it's because we're not here. Otherwise, we answer all the phone calls unless both lines are busy. So. That gets you updated on the warehouse sale. I told you a couple jokes. I've got a few more to tell you. What did the left eye say to the right eye? I think there's something smelly in between us. <laughs> They're funny, right? They're funny. Okay, so let's do winner, winner, chicken dinner. And this is from the 400th YouTube. I have eight winners who have won a $50 gift card. It is already in your online account. Our main winner, the one whose name got pulled, who made the decision for everybody else on how many gift cards we gave away out of that $400, is Francis Lund. Francis, you're a winner, winner, chicken dinner, and you've got $50 ready to spend. And it was your, it wasn't your joke, it was your random, the random selection of your name that decided that these seven other people besides you are going to receive a $50 gift card. So. Gosh, if I were one of these other people, I'd be saying wahoo could chew to Francis, right? All right, I'm gonna do my best to read names and you'll just live with it. Our second winner is Maria, Maria or Apollo. Hello, Maria or Apollo. After that, it's Carolyn, Carolyn Shirey. Hello, Carolyn Shirey. Then we have Gina, Gina Spears. Hi, Gina, thanks for the easy name, God bless you. Oh, Elaine, Elaine Moore, love you too, and that's M-O-O-R-E. Hello, Elaine, thank you for the easy, oh, and Nancy, some of these names are good, I can actually say them. Nancy Loring, hello, Nancy, you're a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Then we have Faith, Faith Scheidel, is that right, Faith? Am I close, am I nowhere near? Does it really matter? <laughs> and our last one, well, we saved the hardest for the last one, Judy. I wonder if Elena put it in order like this, so my hardest one was the last one. Judy. S 
Sel. Sl sl nope. Slegstein? Slegstein? Judy Slegstein? Is that right? Judy Slegstein? Okay, I'm going to hold this up so that you all can see your name. And if you see your name, you are a winner, winner, chicken dinner, and there is already $50 in your online account. Congratulations to all of you. Well done. Now, before we do the winner, winner, chicken dinner dance, I've got a few jokes. Francis Lund's joke. What did the jam say when it broke up with the bread? You deserve butter. <laughs> Nancy Loring, how do you throw a space party? You plan it. <laughs> These are so hokey. I love them. <laughs> Judy Slegstein, why was Rembrandt not allowed to buy new art supplies? He was too broke. <laughs> okay, so let's do the winner winner chicken dinner dance. Thank you all for amusing me and keeping me laughing. And I will return to those anytime I am having a down day. I will go back to YouTube number 400 and read the comments because you just made my heart so happy. All right. You're a winner, chicken dinner. You're a winner, chicken dinner. Wahoo, cut you for you. Congratulations to all eight of you. I hope you enjoy your winnings. I hope you use it for something frivolous that you would have never bought for yourself, but now you can. Compliments of scrapbooking made simple from my heart to yours. Thank you, thank you, thank you for 400 amazing YouTubes. Now on to 401. Okay, so. I'm going to tilt on down. I'm going to show you some samples and then we're going to get started for today. I think I'm going to start with white paper and then I'm going to do black paper. I'm going to start maybe with, maybe I start with marabou and then I'm going to move into uh, black paper and the fine tech. I think that's the plan. I don't know. Can you see me? I feel like I'm dark. Well, you know what it is, what it is, is what it is. Okay, so I'm going to tilt on down. We're going to get started for today. I'll see you in a little bit. Bye. Okay, let's zoom on in. Zoom, 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 zoom. They turned the air conditioner off. Oh, it's a little warm in here. And I think that's good. Okay. So, let me show you some quick samples. Ooh, right, shinies. Metallic-y. Isn't that pretty? And then I have... Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Love that stamp. That's a woodware stamp. I love that stamp. And then last but not least, it's the same stamp, but done totally different. Wow, holy smokes, artichokes. Look at that. Okay. All right. So let's start for today. I think the first thing I'm going to do is start with the peel offs. I'm going to kind of run through what everything is and what everything does, and then we'll start building things and, and playing with things and mixing things together. I am going to start with some peel offs. And let's grab that. And let's grab that. So gold, silver, and, and a black. Okay, let's grab that. All right, what are peel-offs? Peel-offs are just stickers. They're a vinyl sticker. I use them a lot. We carry them a lot because they're wonderful. They We carry them in, in the gold, the silver, the white, and the black. Are they delicate? No, because they are cut out of vinyl. Are they easy to use? Yes. I'll tell you the first thing that I generally like to do is pull the backing off of my peel off sticker. And we're going to be using peel off stickers today, but in a way that you might not have thought to use them. So 
peel my black off. Because when I do that, just so you can see the difference, it's easier for me to see this than it is that especially when you're working with white peel off stickers. Are they they're, are they delicate? No, they look delicate, but they're very, very, very hardy. Okay, so there, there, there. Whoop. I just want you to see the difference. It's a little hard to see what I have down here, but up there I can clearly see my leaves. So I always pull the backs off of, of mine, and I'm gonna do that on these. And you may be looking at these going, oh yeah, Stacy, I haven't used stick, uh, stickers since 1980. Well, maybe, and maybe gold and silver and white and black stickers are not the thing for you. But before I get too far in, I just wanna show you that these don't have to stay, the black have to stay black. That's true, oh, I pulled one up with me, don't do that. Let's see if I can get it off and put it back down. The black have to stay black, but the white and the gold and the silver do not have to stay white, gold, and silver. Yeah, I peeled one up with me. Let's see if I can get it back down. A little bit of... <laughs> Gosh, I really tangled it up good. All right, I'm just... Well, I just want to do it, but... Nope, I'm just going to let it go. We're just going to let it go. Okay, so I have white, black, gold, and silver. And I don't want to keep them this color. I want to change them. I'm not a gold person. I'm not a silver person. Not a problem. I'm going to grab my permanent markers, and we're going to do this super quick because many of you have seen this before. These are the Marabou permanent markers, and they are very much like a Bic or a Sharpie pen. They are meant to go on non-porous things. So when you grab your, your Sharpie markers or your Bic markers, you're writing on metal or plastic or glass. You can write on paper as well, but they're meant for metal, plastic, glass, anything non-porous, which these stickers are. I'm gonna grab a one and a two and a three, and I'm gonna grab a one, and a two and a three and how about we play with those okay so if you've got sharpies at home that's all you need if you've got big markers at home that's all you need the nice thing about the marabou is that they're double ended you've got a super fine tip for writing you've got a brush not a brush tip but more of a bullet tip at the top for coloring whereas your Bix and your Sharpies don't. You would have to buy multiple sizes. Now, if I go on to, let's start with, let's start with white. Oh, maybe I need an orange. Just when I thought I had everything. Maybe I need an orange and maybe a brown. Ooh. All right, so white peel offs. If I were to take them off and put them on paper, that's what it would look like. Kind of meh, all right? But if I take my markers and I color over the top of them. So if I grab this one and I just color with some yellow right over the top and then I go schmooze with my finger. In fact, let's see if I can zoom in just a little bit more. So yellow and then kind of move it around with my finger and then maybe I grab some of my orange and smooch with my finger. So it's going to dry pretty quickly on this because it is a vinyl. So it's not gonna stay wet. And then maybe a little bit of my darker, how about down here maybe, a little bit of my burgundy and I just wanna smooch some of it. 
So I'm making kind of a hot mess. And I'm okay with that. And maybe just a little bit more yellow at the top. And how about some brown for my stem? Okay, I'm done. Yeah, a little bit of a mess until we peel it off. And then I took that white sticker and I colored it. Crazy easy to do. Super easy to do. You literally just schmooze. I've even got some color on from my, my finger from the other one. Maybe I get a little darker green. Do I have a darker green? Let's try this green, see if this one's darker. Oh yeah. It's got a little green going on, a little brown going on. All I want to do is just kind of color it all over the place and do a little bit of a schmooze. Maybe throw a little yellow in there. Kind of looks like a hot mess until I peel it off. And then all of a sudden, I've taken that boring white sticker and made it something totally different. You can do that with any of the colors. So if I did that with my silver, silver tends to like cool colors better. So if I went in there with my blues and my purples and even my pinks, it's going to like the colors, the cooler colors better because silver is a cool color. And I'm just coloring right on top and then kind of smushing. Do I have a pink? I should have just opened the whole thing and kept them all out. I don't know what I was thinking. And then. Maybe uh, maybe we do a little bit of the pink up here at the kind of smudge that in. And maybe a little down here and smudge that in. Because feathers are a bunch of different colors, right? And maybe a little bit of a dark purple. So this doesn't take a lot of effort, but it makes a dramatic difference when you are using the peel off stickers and peel off stickers are very inexpensive. I want to say we sell them for a buck 25 a sheet. This whole sheet is a dollar 25. They're really inexpensive. And when you can do so much with them and wait till you see what we end up doing with them when we're all done, I think you will be like, holy smokes, artichokes. I had no idea. And I could just keep coloring until I want to be done which I guess is now. So let's take a basic feather. My little piece out. Take a basic feather, put it on this side. So a basic silver feather. Then let's take one that we have colorized. Put them kind of side by side. Pretty, right? And the nice thing about it is if you do one 
and you don't like it, let's say I color this pink, and I say to myself, oh yeah, that's not for me. All I have to do is get out a little bit of alcohol. I use hand sanitizer. And erase it so I can start over again. You're not stuck, but it makes such a dramatic difference when you're doing them. Golds, golds like more the warmer colors. So what if I did this one in, and I started with maybe some red at the top. And a little schmooze and some red at the top. And a little schmooze. And then maybe I come in with yellow. Is this gonna hurt my markers? No, not at all. And I blend that yellow kind of into that red. And then maybe at the bottom, I do kind of a brownie, burgundy kind of color. And I take that right into the yellow. So this is the easiest way to use peel offs. If you don't want them to be gold or silver, you buy the base color that you like. If you wanna use snowflakes, you might wanna buy those in silvers. If you're gonna use blues and, and, and purples to color them, are you doing what I'm doing and using reds and yellows and browns? Then maybe you stick with a gold base. Or maybe you like them gold. Every now and then you might just wanna do it in gold or silver or white. Okay, let's peel off our regular butterfly. Now, the more finicky these are, the more little pieces are, the longer they are, the harder they are to kind of keep on your fingers. And the best way to do that is to take either a little bit of spit on the finger and put it to the back, uh, put it to the back, and that will allow it to not stick to you so you're able to work with it. Or you take a little bit of water and put it on the back because that lets you lay the sticker down. It's not like clinging all over me. It allows you to lay the sticker down. So there's my gold. And now let's pull up my gold that looks like a hot mess. A little bit of spit on the back. totally different. So with these stickers, you absolutely have options. The only one you don't have an option with is the black sticker. And that's because, well, no matter how much you color on it, that color is going to absorb into the black and you're never, ever, ever going to see it. So a black sticker just stays black, but it looks like you've embossed it. When you peel it and you put it down, it almost looks like you've done a beautiful heat embossing. Hmm. But you're never gonna be able to color a black sticker. You can color in the black sticker, but you can't actually change it. It makes these stickers way more than what they were supposed to be. It gives you so many options for $1.25 you just you get a lot of value for your money so that is peel off stickers they are made from a vinyl they absolutely can be put in a dishwasher if you seal it uh they're just they're wonderful they really are and in the white the gold and the silver you have opportunity to color it okay the next thing i want to talk about is marabou crayons so these were marabou now i can go back just a little bit these were marabou permanent ink, permanent markers, like a Bic and a Sharpie. These are Marabou Soft Pastels. When you think of a soft pastel, most of us think of 
a kind of a chalky substance that's in kind of a like a chalk stick and then you rub it these are a creamy pastel they're called crayons but they're not crayons they are not something like crayola it is a creamy creamy highly pigmented soft pastel and because it's by marabou it is more on the lines of a fine art type product there are lots of crayons out there gelatos absolutely will gelatos do the same thing as what i'm going to do yes the only difference is the pigment ratio is different in a gelato they're not quite as creamy they're not quite as pigmented and you don't get as much in the tube as you do with these for your money and the tube is pretty full mine are pretty used but let's see I mean, that's quite a bit of crayon. Gelatos, you don't get quite as much. Tim Holtz crayons, I'm not overly familiar with. I, I don't know, I'm having, I'm thinking that they're, again, they'd be comparable to a gelato type style crayon, but if that's what you have, then you can certainly use those. The nice thing about the Marabou, boy, my table just wants to run. The nice thing about the Marabou is even though they're a high pigmented soft pastel crayon, and again, crayon, is from the European term for a soft pastel. They call them crayons over in Europe and in Germany, and that's where these are made. Um, what was I? Gosh, now. <laughs> so, oh, the, the price. The price is amazing for them. So because they are more in a fine art market, then they are a scrapbooking paper crafting market. It doesn't have that scrapbooking label on it and therefore the pricing is, is, is much lower. Uh, $3.99 per crayon, just regular price every day is $3.99 and for the quantity you get and the pigment you get. Now, if these were manufactured by a scrapbooking company, I have a feeling the pricing would be much, much more. And for you guys today, I have them in four packs and I've got them at a rock bottom price. I, I wanna say, I wanna say they're $14.99 each and we have four different four packs making them um, like 60 bucks, 15, yeah, 60 bucks and we're doing all of them for $34.99. So anyway, all the colors I'm using today are in one of those four pack colors and I've, I've got them all. So soft pastel, creamy pastel, but how do you use them? Well, it just really depends upon what you want to do with them. If I take white, and this is this is inexpensive watercolor paper, and I do mean inexpensive watercolor paper. They're actually postcards, which is kind of cute. And they're just the perfect size, and they're by Royal, Royal Talons. You get 30 of them, and they're great for what I'm going to be using them today for. Crayons, the easiest way to use them is by just taking a baby wipe. Yep. Just taking a baby wipe. Folding your baby wipe and then folding your baby wipe and then folding your baby wipe and then folding your baby wipe. Okay? And we grab a color we like straight onto the baby wipe. So you can see how pigmented it is and they go a long way. One crayon may very well last you a lifetime. And then I just kind of rub it on. Then I bring over another color. Uh, let's do the orange. Right over the top, actually that's more red. Right over the top of the yellow. I'm not gonna change my baby wipe. I'm not going to get another baby wipe. I'm not going to flip it to a whole new space. I want the colors to blend. So right over the top and then I can go right on in and add my color however I want it. How much, how little, it's up to me. But I can make a beautiful, beautiful background. I can go back in with my yellow if I want to blend this more. And look at the blend. 
so pretty. Now if I want, I can go straight on top. Now that it's got some color down, I can go straight on top with my crayon and kind of intensify my color wherever I want it more, more intense. Or I can put it right onto my, I haven't moved my baby wipe, I haven't flipped it into a different corner. I'm still using the same corner. And I can just go in there and add my color. So because I'm on watercolor paper, the paper is not getting little balls on it. It's, it's keeping nice and flat and straight and beautiful and it's not disintegrating in front of my eyes. So pretty and so easy to do. So if I wanted to do a different color, I just pick it up, change over my baby wipe and let's grab Now you also are able, if you wanted to, to mist your paper and just put a light spray of water. It'll lighten your colors a little bit, soften them up a little bit to start with. And let's take maybe my darker blue and maybe I come in here with a little bit of a purple just right on top And my paper is not disintegrating. And I can just keep going until I'm happy. I can just keep adding color until I say enough. And then if I wanted to lighten this up a little bit, so that's where I'm at. If I wanted to lighten this up a little bit, the Essentials comes with a white. White right on. And then I can lighten it up and it will soften. The white will soften and blend the colors into each other even more or go dark. Let's get a little bit of purple in there. Or I can put my white right to it and then blend it in. So marabou crayons are super easy to use. If I don't want it to look like this, if I don't like it in the with the diagonal, not a problem. Well, I guess I could stay where I am. It's not a diagonal anymore. <laughs> The colors will just continue to blend as long as you've got some water on your baby wipe. Colors will just continue to blend. So if you do it and you're like, no, that wasn't what I was going for, you are not stuck. Not with Marabou. And then if I wanna pull color off, 
take a plain baby wipe. And then I can go in and start to pull color off. You really have a tremendous amount of options for very little money. If you're not awesome at coloring, Marabou makes it easy. I could really pull some color off. Look at how much color I'm pulling off. whatever makes your heart happy. The thing is you have to let it, the paper now is really wet. So it hasn't soaked through all the way to the back side, but you do want to let it, you do want to let it dry. Absolutely. You want to let it dry. Heat tool it, sit it aside for a few moments. And then have at it. So what are we going to do with these today? Well, I'm going to start with the peel-offs. I think that's where I'm going to start. And the peel-offs, let's pull over. Let's pull over. Let's pull over the butterflies. And you're like, but you already showed me how to color these. I know, I want to do something different with these than coloring them. I'm still going to use them, but in a in a way you may not have thought about. And I'm going to start with white paper on Marabou, but eventually we're going to move to black paper and fine tech iridescent paint, which will knock your socks off. I mean, I'm not kidding. It will knock your socks off the fine tech iridescence they're beautiful. But I want to start in a in a way where people who are on a budget, crafters who are on a budget can feel that they can do this. They it's you've got a dollar 25 for the stickers, the Marabou crayons, even if you just wanted one set, they're 14.99 less 20% and the bundle is on a really big savings. But before we get to the fine tech, which really is fine art product, I want to I want to show how easy it is to use what you might already have. Now I'm going to go ahead and I've got a piece of my watercolor paper and I'm going to take I'm going to take my my butterfly and I'm going to peel it off. I'm going to put a little bit of spit behind it. Do a little bit of spit. Just so when I pick it up and put it down, it gives me an opportunity to move with it. It's not, it's not all over my, my fingers. And I'm going to put that down. Then I'm going to grab this one. Same thing. A little bit of spit. And I'm going to put this one. I don't know. Not too close. See that having that little bit of spit allows me to pull it back up again. It doesn't cement it to my paper yet. That's a good thing. Oh, you know what? Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll maybe I'll pull it put it way up here and kind of off. Boy, I can't decide, can I? Just do it, Stacy, right? Okay, so kind of off. And you're like, but why is it off? That's where I'm at. Now what am I gonna do? Let's take my marabou crayons and let's get a baby wipe. And how about we do maybe the blue should have picked a corner you know what I want a corner that way it doesn't flop back and forth I'm going to do it in a corner 
and I'm just going to go over the whole thing. Right over the sticker, because the sticker is going to resist that blue. It's going to resist that marabou. The sticker's vinyl. So the water-based product isn't going to stick to it like that marker did, but that marker is a permanent marker, so it's more of an alcohol-based product. And let's just add some in here. And then maybe, how about this tealy color? Right over the top and, ooh, isn't that pretty? And then maybe some purple. And then maybe I come back over it with some blue again. Now I bet you think that I'm just going to take this and cut this off and we're going to make a card. Nope. Do we like the colors? Are we good? Should I be done? Should I be done? Okay. What if I took and because it was wet and because I had a little bit of spit on the back, what if I peeled them back up? Remember, you're talking about a buck 25 sticker here for the whole sheet. And the fact of the matter is, it's still sticky. I can come back and put it back on my liner. A little bit of spit on the back. It's getting a little sticky. It wants to stick to me. That way I can kind of line it up and put it back and reuse it again. So there's that one. Had you thought about using peel-offs as stencils, as masks? Because I'm not stenciling in the color, I'm masking off the color. And because it was a little wet on the back side with a little bit of spit, I can put it back and now I've used them as a stencil. I can still, or a mask, I can still put them down on a piece of paper. I can still use this. I can use it for another stencil. What if I took another piece of paper and this time I went here and a little bit of spit on the back side. Should have probably done that with that one. I'm going to lift it up here and here. So I'm going to lift this one up just to put a little extra water, moisture, whatever it is that makes your heart happy. As far as I'm concerned, my spit's always with me and it's never failed me. <laughs> so what if I did that? And then I got my baby wipe and folded and folded and folded and yellow, yellow, yellow. Kind of go over the whole thing. I'm 
I got the blue from my fingers on here. And then let's grab my red. And a little bit of my orange. And I'm just kind of all over the place. It's not very pretty. It doesn't look great until I come back and maybe add a little bit more yellow. And just kind of cement my colors. And if I want a little more red, because you're working on watercolor paper, even though it's inexpensive watercolor paper, doesn't matter. It lets you add as much water as you need to get done what you want to get done without the paper turning into mush. I could go over the top with my red. All right, I think I'm good. My stickers are still silver because they resisted. And then I can peel off. Now I've used this twice. Could I use it a third time? Yes. Absolutely. And let's take one more sheet. I know I've peeled off a jillion sheets for myself. Let's take one more sheet. Let's just put it. Right there. And let's peel this one off. So let's say you're not into stickers and you don't want to color them with a Sharpie or a Bic or a Marabou. What if you like little masks and little masks are hard to find? Stencils always come in A2, that's what I make mine in, an A2 size or a 6x6 six six or a now a slimline size. But little ones, hmm, a little bit of spit. Little ones are not as easy to come by. and they still stick and now I can do something with that. But look at what I did. Right? Pretty cool with a little sticker. Pretty cool. But we're not done. What if I took a border sticker? Hmm, let's see what borders I have. So these are new to us. We brought in some new borders. Let's see what this one looks like. So a border sticker. It's hard to see what the sticker is until you pull it off. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a little bit of spit on the back side of this or water or you could mist it lightly. And I'm gonna put it See, do I have all my little pieces out? I'm going to put it a little more right down on top. Now, that's pretty just the way it is. That's a beautiful sticker. Looks like you've embossed it. It's got a beautiful high sheen to it. So pretty. But what if I wanted to do more with it? What if I wanted to add the red? And 
and get some red in there. Got to make sure it's down pretty good. There's the sirens. Hopefully it's not as bad as it was last week. Last week there was a fire, but they got the fire out pretty quickly. It was a fire in a residential area, which is always scary. Because I'm using the same red that I used in my background, if it gets on the sides a little bit, if I go out of my, out of my border, no worries. I can even put my red directly onto my sticker and kind of move it in with my fingers because the paper's still wet and because I'm putting it on top of vinyl. Gives you an opportunity to kind of move it around. Right on top. Okay, shall we pull it? You're gonna pull it. Yeah, I'm gonna pull it. Look at that. With a sticker. And the sticker's still good. I could put the sticker down on my craft mat, get a clean baby wipe, kind of wipe it on down, get all my red off of it. You wouldn't think that they're so hardy, would you? And then. Go again. And let's grab maybe my purple and fold, fold, fold. And I'm using the same purple I used in my background, so if I get it out on the edges, see if I get it out there, no big deal, you just kind of blend it on in. Blend it on in, wipe it on off, look at that. Like it was part of the background to begin with. So I kind of got it all out. I want to blend that out and blend that out. I could use a little blue if it made my heart happy towards the bottom, just so it's not so much purple. But I want that purple in there to do that stenciling. Okay, let's pull it and see what we get. Do you like it white? Do you like it with a colored background? What is it that speaks to you? And did you know that those stinking dollar twenty-five stickers could be so useful and this is not done. I could put it down, get my purple off of it. Could I use it again? Yes, <laughs> it's still sticky. Can I peel this one up or is it too late? Oh no, I can still get this one up. Let's get this one up. Now 
Now eventually these will become permanent and you won't be able to get them up. But for now, for now I get the chance to play. Maybe a little bit of burgundy. And maybe just a tad bit more yellow just to blend everything in. And this time, this time I'm going to be done. Cut. Cut. So, I did that. I did that. I did that. This time I finally used the stickers. And can I go in and paint? Absolutely. How about we do, let me put that over to the side. How about we use some stamps? So I have got four, I really should put all my lids back on. I know I hear you all saying, put your lids on. So much easier said than done. Okay. Do the crayons dry out? No, they don't. They're a cream pastel. Wow, I opened up everything, didn't I? That's so typical me. This one goes here, and this one goes here. What if I took, so I've got four stamps from, four butterfly stamps from woodware. Four different butterflies. And we're selling it as an I want it all package. It's the only way you can get them. You get all four butterflies for I think under 10 bucks. And they're all different. So what if I took that and I took my watercolor paper. Oh, time to open a new one. And I stamped on my watercolor paper. Let's just stamp. So let's take let's take this one here and let's grab a stamp block and my gush mat stamp block from Couture Creations. Put my stamp right on it. I'm going to be using an India ink. There's the stamp design. I'm going to be using an India ink today because an India ink is going to stain the stamp black. So right now, kind of hard to see the design. But the minute I ink it with an India ink, I'll be able to see that design all the time. Is it going to hurt the stamp that it's stained? No. When you clean it, as long as it wipes clean and there's no black coming off, then it's good to use with any color you want. But now, now I can see my design so much better. And an India ink is not going to move with water. And that's an important thing because I'm using baby wipes. And so let's go one, two, three, A, B, C there. And how about here? And oh, got my finger in it. <laughs> I sure did. And maybe. 
there. And with the four different stamps, you can create so many different, so many different backgrounds. You can mix the butterflies up so you don't have all the same butterfly on the same piece of paper. Try to cover up my goof. And then maybe a little there. And maybe a little here. And maybe a little. There. Anyway, I'm just making a background. Because I am able to then take it, give it a second to dry, but I'm able to take it and use my marabou crayons right over the top of it again. Let's say we do this one in like the light blue. So, seems pretty dry to me. I'm gonna fold, fold, fold. Although I don't think I'm gonna blend any colors. I think I'm just gonna put down one color. Pull the corner, get in the corner, add your crayon. And, and because it is a India ink, it doesn't schmooze with water. Could you do this with your Tim Holtz ink? No, it's water reactive. Uh, Marabou, uh, no, Memento ink. Yes, you could get it. You could use your Memento inks to do that. It will not move with water, but I just want a very soft, happy little background. Okay, just a nice soft background because then then I can go in and decide, do I want to paint with it? And what do I want to do? I can put a little water. I can take my, my marabou crayon, a little bit of a paintbrush, get the top of my marabou crayon wet. And I can go in there and paint my color in entirely up to you what you want to do. Can you just paint with them? Absolutely. Darker. Can you blend color? Absolutely. I'm just going in with my purple and putting some purple in there. You can palette paint with them. You can take the color straight from the straight from the crayon like I'm doing. Just start to color. Boy, can you blend colors? Yeah, sure, absolutely you can blend colors. Um See if I get a little bit on this teal. And I can put the teal onto the onto the purple. Mm, should have used a different color than teal. It's too close to the background. But you can totally blend your colors in. It's whatever works for you. These crayons are very, very, very forgiving. And that's the thing about fine art product. When you're talking about fine art product, it's not about whether you're a fine artist or not. It's about the quality of the product. And anytime you start with something that's a better quality product, you're going to get a better result. So if you can get something that is considered fine art type material for the same price as something that you would find in the paper crafting area, why wouldn't you start with something 
better to begin with. And that is why we brought Marabou in. It was a better product, more product for less money. I could just color the whole thing. Do, do I want to add some purple around my edges with my crayon? I can. And I've just stamped. So I could color in that whole, that one stamp, just that one stamp, and leave the rest of it as just background. But add all that detail in. to just that one stamp. You don't have time to color all of them. I get it. Color that one stamp and make that one stamp what pops. You have options. You have lots and lots and lots of options. What do I do with that piece of paper? What do you want to do? The nice thing is, you don't have to decide. You can do it all. You can absolutely do it all. Can you heat emboss? Yes, absolutely you can heat emboss. I think for that, I think we're going to move into the black paper. Maybe we move into the black paper. Hmm, love, love, love. Okay, so let's bring out the black cardstock, or the black watercolor paper. Now, the white watercolor paper I was using is just, it's okay watercolor paper. Is it the best on the market? No. Does it do what I want it to do? Yes. So for that, I'm happy. It, I don't need to have the best on the market. Black watercolor paper, however, is a different thing in, in totality. It's completely different. Do I want a high grade black watercolor paper? Yes, because what am I putting on black? Metallics. And metallics, you want it to take that color and love the color. So we have the Van Gogh. We also carry the Van Gogh in the white, but we have the Van Gogh watercolor paper in black in the cardstock or the postcard size and in the 12 sheet paper pad. Is this the best on the market? It's it's pretty freaking rock star. It really is. It's amazing. It it just it's just thick and yummy and it just takes the color like crazy. Now I'm going to start with the fine tech. I'm going to show you what fine tech is and fine tech, not the least expensive paint out there. Not, not at all. Is it beautiful? Yes. The first fine tech that we brought out was this kit right here and we'll have this on a YouTube yummy sale. These are a highly pigmented watercolor paint, and it absolutely is fine art product. But do not worry, you do not have to be a fine artist to use these. And the colors are rich. Now I need to prime them. So I'm gonna put a little bit of water in each of them and let it sit for a minute. Do you have to dry them out? They dry out on their own. You don't have to take the water out. The water will evaporate on its own, but I need them to move. So I'm just gonna get them wet and give them an opportunity to move. And let's push that out of the way. And I wanna show you some of the colors. Put a little more in there and I can mist my paper first if I want them to move around a little bit more you don't have to but let's try and get some of this color on here and a little goes a long way these fine texts will probably last you a lifetime
So this is not like we carry the Yasutomo watercolor metallics in there. It's $8 for the set. This, this is different. <laughs> you cannot compare these to the $8 Yasutomo set. Can you play with the $8 Yasutomo set? Yes. Will it make beautiful things? Yes. Will you have to use a lot more product to get the same intensity? Yes. A little of this goes a long way and you can mist it to blend it even more, add more water to do the blends. And then let's pick up another color. So I want you to see fine tech. There are other companies that look like fine tech, but they're not. Be careful. If you are shopping on Amazon, please be careful. Please find a local retailer or a mom and pop online, please. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of product out there that looks similar but is not. And if you're spending your hard earned money on it, you want to get what you what you think you've paid for. So just please be careful out there. We deal with Royal Talons. Royal Talons is the distributor here in the United States for fine tech. In fact, they might be the distributor worldwide for fine tech. They stand behind the product. They stand behind Scrapbooking Made Simple, which is saying, you know, I'm grateful because they are a fine art company and we are a paper crafting store. And they said, welcome. <laughs> Can you see how beautiful they are? That's on black watercolor paper. It's magic. This is the original set we started with. I'm gonna put it right here. Are you ready to see the new set that we have? Cause it's magic. So this comes in a six pan and I know it looks all white but these are interference colors. So while the first pan, the color you saw was the color you got. Oh, that's just dreamy. I am so sorry it is, it's just dreamy. The interference, let me get them started. So I'm just gonna put some water. And then when I'm done using it, I'm just gonna leave it open until the water evaporates. If you run out of a pan, can you get a different color? Can you get another pan, just that one color? Yes, look at, they just pop right out and you buy the single colors. So let's kind of give it a second to bloom, I think is what they call it. <laughs> I think that's the fine art term. And let's go in. Holy smokes, artichokes. Can you see the color? These are interference colors, which means they start as a white, kind of a translucent base, but they've got hues. I mean, they're stunning and they will go over anything. Hmm. The 
Did I do this one? I should have kept track of the ones I did. And they just blend into each other. Yummy. So when you see them like this, the color you see is the color you get. When you see them like this, those are called interference colors, and it's the iridescence that makes up the color. It's all the same base color, but the iridescence that's put in is what makes them go, ooh. So let's play with them. <laughs> Oh, these made my heart so happy. And let's do, let's do what we did with the peel-offs. How about I take and put a little bit of Spit or water on the back, whichever it is you're most comfortable with. Please do not send me emails. I I I, I understand some of you cannot are like ooh, but I, I don't I'm okay with not getting the email. Really I am. <laughs> oh, okay, let's put it down. And what color do we like, or what colors do we like? Um, maybe I missed my paper just a little bit, so it blends really easy. Throw that in there. A little more water, keep them nice and moist. If I wanted it to blend better, I can add some water there and loosen it up so it moves. I don't know, what do we think? We good? out a little bit of the water and I can pick some color up if I want And then as it dries, the iridescence is going to come out more and more and more. All right, let's see what I got. Hopefully I had it pushed down far enough. Make sure I just put my finger over it. I want to make sure that I've got good color on it.
Is that the coolest thing ever? <laughs> From a sticker. <laughs> but <laughs> it'll do more. <laughs> of course it will. Um, I could do... I don't know. I could do this side. Well, it doesn't matter. I'll, yeah, I could do this side over here and put it down. And I could get a couple of my butterflies or, or maybe some feathers or a couple leaves. Oh. A little bit of wetness on the back. A little bit of wetness on the back. Move that one up just a little bit. And I can get my bigger brush. Make sure it's down. Oh, this one's so pretty. Come in. A little bit of a towel. Lay down my color just to give a beautiful black iridescent background. on there just to help move it. Move that color all the way around so it's everywhere. A little bit of water on watercolor paper. Water's your friend. Okay, so I've got kind of a background going. Now I could come back with my, my regular colors. And I could go right over it. And my sticker is resisting. My sticker is resisting the color. So it's not staying on the white because the white is vinyl. And I could blend these. So I've got that beautiful iridescent background. I could take and blend my colors and add a little gold in here. Just go right over it. right over the top. And you 
use the bigger bigger brush for this. Just a little bit right over the top. Okay, I'm gonna peel these. I'm not gonna leave them with the white. I'm gonna peel it and see what we got. <laughs> that makes my heart happy and I can still use this. This is fine tech, and it is every bit of fine. <laughs> you cannot do this with just your average metallic watercolor. Come on, there we go. Hello. Ah, uh, is that okay? All I did was mush stuff. I mushed stuff, but look at what I got. If you are not a stamper, but you want to have fun like this, stickers are your new BFF. And I can use them again. I don't have to be done. I could I could leave this. Look at how pretty that is. I could leave this just like that and um and use it on a piece of paper, whether it be watercolor paper or not. Come on. I could just leave it like that and leave that iridescence or and I still have these these are still sticky so I could put these back on their liner and either wipe them off with a baby wipe and get the metallic off of them or use them again as another stencil I could use this one Peel up some of that, pull up some of that color. And this time, let's just go in there. Uh, yummy. Yummy. I, I mean, you have the options that you have are are infinite. They're absolutely infinite. And if you are a stamper, the stamps that we have from Woodware are stunning. Uh, okay, let's try that one. So I'm just going to go over the top. I'm going to do my best to stay inside my lines. I'm going to try not to go outside my border too much. And then where I did go outside my border, can you see I kind of got a little bit off the edge? I'm just going to take and with a baby wipe and do my best to just go in there and kind of erase it. Well, now I got my fingers all in it. But I am, I'm going to kind of erase that edge.
so pretty, so easy, and it's still kind of sticky. I can still use this somewhere on something, on something that makes my heart happy. And once I leave it down, it will eventually dry to a permanent sticker. But what if you like to stamp? What if you have a stamped image that you want to use? Okay, let's pull out, gosh, we've got several of them. Let's start with this one from Woodware. Love, love, love this one. Actually, these are my three favorite. There were there was a whole collection of them, and I picked the three that made my heart most happy. And these are the three. Can you believe that these are $7.50 for a stamp? I mean, in this size, that's pretty wonderful. And then we've got them on a YouTube Yummy. But really, a retail stamp that size for $7.50, you gotta give it up to Creative Expressions. You do, you gotta give it up to them and Woodware for doing a beautiful designs killer designs for a wonderful price. Now let's say, let's say, do I want to do it on black or do I want to do it on white? Hmm. Well, if I did it on white with white embossing powder, let's get a block. And let's grab some Versamark. Versamark is an embossing medium. You ink up your stamp, you stamp it down, and then you throw embossing powder over the top of it and heat it with a heat gun. You're not going to see really any color in this. It is just a medium that stays wet long enough for you to get embossing powder down and heat it. Do you use a blow dryer with your embossing powder? No, it, it will not work. It will not. Uh, let's see, should I? I think I'm going to back rub this one just for the. So instead of doing instead of doing. This, which I, I guess I can, which I can, I was going to do a back rub, but. So I'm going to line it up. If you have a stamp positioner of course your world is a lot easier because if you don't get your versa mark everywhere you just have to open it up reverse the mark and it lay you know positions right back down on top if you're concerned you turn it over and you do the back rub method um, some people have come out with these little things that you rub over it just take your I mean, if you can hold this, you can rub all over so it gets your whole impression. Now, I can't see if I did a good job or not. We're gonna have to wait until I put some embossing powder on it. So let me get my little funnel and I'm gonna use a white embossing powder because I want the finished image to be white. So this is, oh, let me make sure this isn't clear. Hooey. This is clear. Well, I could use clear, but white would be better. White will be whiter. Let's use the white. This is detailed embossing powder from Stampendous. It's not typical regular embossing powder. It is detailed embossing powder, which means that it has been ground finer than a standard embossing powder, allowing it to hold and cling onto the detailed image better. You have to kind of think about embossing powder like salt and pepper. There's coarse ground pepper, there's tables, you know, ground pepper. How, how, oh, there's coarse salt, there's table ground salt. It's the same with embossing powder. And just like with salt or pepper, if you use a coarse pepper, and you throw a handful into your soup or your stew, well, it's going to be very peppery because those those granules are much bigger than a, let's say a table pepper. That wouldn't be so peppery because the grains are smaller. The same thing with embossing powder. The smaller the grain, the more it holds onto the detail. 
the larger the grain, when it melts, when it melts, it, 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 ooh, you know, becomes a liquid form and it will spread and lose the detail. So I don't know if you can see it, but I've got detail embossing powder all over. I'm going to take my heat tool. Now this is the Sizzix heat tool. Great little heat tool. It has two speeds. It is a cylinder. It's going to go much faster than my heat tool from Ranger. I was I, I didn't carry cylinders for the longest time because you can burn so easily your paper and your embossing powder, but because it has two speeds and lets me get right on top of everything. I felt comfortable enough to start carrying it. So if you're new to embossing, start with the lower speed. And if you're an expert, well, you can go to the high one. And what's gonna happen is as I put the heat onto, oh, hello, as I put the heat onto my paper, my embossing powder is gonna go from a powder to a solid. And I stay in one place until I start to see it turn color. So I just move it slowly over the image. So I'm going to stop there and hopefully the camera is able, can you see where the high gloss is? That's where the embossing powder has turned from a powder into a solid. Is it dry? The minute it cools down, it's dry. But can you see up here, it's not high gloss at all? That's still a powder and if I wiped my hand over it, I'd wipe all that powder away and I'd have to start again. But I want you to see. and I'm getting right down on top of it, even in the high speed. And I can see it turning, and as I see the powder turning, becoming a bright gloss white, I'm slowly moving my heat tool. Folks really like to do this with their heat tool. They really like to do this. The problem with doing that is that you're never focusing the heat in one place at any one time. You have heat here and it starts to churn, but then you but then you do this and it moves over and you're heating and then cooling and then because every time you take it away it starts to cool. Ooh, I wonder who really wants me. So <laughs> So if you keep it in one place and as you see it turn, you move with it you'll get a more consistent, better embossing. You won't, hopefully you don't miss anything. And then you can kind of rotate it and see if it's glossy everywhere. I think, yeah, I think I'm good. So now I can take my Marabou markers. I have no idea who's buzzing me, but they really want me. Okay. It was Mary Lynn, something about a ceremony. I wonder if one of her kid, her grandkids graduated. Hello, Mary Lynn. I can't talk right now. I'm in the middle of a class. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> love you, but I can't talk right now. <laughs> and she's going to continue. <gasps> oh my gosh, Mary Lynn, stop. <laughs> Oh yeah, it is a graduation. Stop! <laughs> I am teaching. <laughs> How much you want to bet she answers? <laughs> okay, <laughs> let me grab some of my marabou. <laughs> <laughs> and let's go over it. How about we start with some
Boom Yellow. I love her to death. God bless her bee picking heart. <laughs> Now where that image is, <laughs> the color is going to resist. So you will start to see the image coming up. <laughs> and how about we do some orange? Oh, I think she stopped. <laughs> oh, I always grab that thinking it's orange and it's really more red. <laughs> I like my yellow. Let's bring my yellow back. And the darker the color, the more the white is going to stand out. made simple only with one of my YouTubes. <laughs> Go with the flow, baby. That's what they say. Go with the flow. And I can just add color until my little heart is content. But talk about an easy way to do something. Look at that. How fabulous is that, right? And easy. 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 Could I go in there and paint? Sure, absolutely. I could go back in and grab some color. Not with that one. That one's got lots of the fine tech on it. So let's grab another brush. Ah, water. I could go back in and go directly to my paper and really get those petals a little more yellow just in the petals. Can you stamp with Marabou? You can. Got a palette, do it on a palette and move it around and then, or you can rub it over your stamp. You get a very watercolory stamp. It has to be misted. And then maybe a little bit. She stopped. <laughs> I can't wait for tomorrow. Tomorrow will be fun. <laughs> Look at how easy and fast this is. Right? But can we do it with the black? Absolutely. What if you're a stamper? <laughs> Hold on, let me turn this back on. <laughs> there we go. What if you're a stamper? Let's grab a piece of black. And let's grab, let's grab this one. Ooh. Yeah, let's grab this one first, and then maybe I'll do the butterflies too real quick because they're so pretty when the black. This time, instead of using, I want to, I could use a black embossing powder. I could. What if you don't have black embossing powder? What if you have clear embossing powder? I could use a clear embossing powder. First things first, though, 
got to ink it up with my Versamark. <laughs> and let's put it down. Make sure I have a good impression all over. Give a good press. If you've got a stab positioner, go ahead and use that. If you're worried about your hands, uh, I probably just moved it. We'll pull it just in case. If you were worried about your hands, you could do a back rub. I can see that my impression is there. This time I'm gonna use a clear embossing powder. Let's see what Let's see, I put the clear away. Detail white, clear. So a clear embossing powder is gonna do the same thing as the white. It's going to leave the image only. It's not going to be, uh, it's going to be transparent. So the black comes through. The nice thing about using clear embossing powder on a dark paper is that you can clearly see it turning. Ooh, yeah, I got my fingerprints all over this one. I'm a dumper. By the time I'm done, almost all of it's going to go back in anyway, and I really did get my fingers in this one. But that's okay. You'll be fine with it, right? Right. Clear back in its bottle. Now the nice thing about clear is when I change it, you are going to be able to see it so easily. Ready? So it starts out looking white. But as I heat it, you can totally see where it's changed. Embossing powder really is an aha moment. And I think I'm going to put that one aside and I'm going to do the I'm going to grab one of the butterflies and do a butterfly while we're right here. And maybe I'll do, so I'm putting it back to back. So I have two butter, or maybe I'll do a totally different shape. Maybe I'll do this shape. And let's grab my mat. Look at my fingerprints. I know, right? Okay, let's get my Versamark. And I'm gonna put one there, and then I'm gonna turn it over and Versamark this one up, and I'll put this one maybe here. And then I'll versa mark this one up. And then maybe I'll put this one kind of there. And then I'll ink this one up. And I'll put this one. I don't know. Maybe there. Oh, that got very close in the wall. Do this one. 
I'll do this one going. This way. And I'll do this one going that away. And I'm just kind of stamping all over. Turn it around. I'm just trying to make some sort of a background to it. They're a little close, but I'm okay with that. So I don't know if you can see the watermarked image. Let's take some clear. Or I could take, I'll do that one in clear. Well, maybe I'll do this one half clear, half black. So from there down, I'm gonna do clear embossing powder just so you can see the difference. And from here up, oh, Stacy, let's put this away, shall we? From here up, I'll do a black embossing powder. Okay. Oh, I really got my thumbprint in it, but that's okay. It's all good. Except for when it's not. All right, so you can see that I've got two embossing powders on it. Just so you'll be able to see the difference if you use a clear versus a black on black paper. And let's bring this one on over. That one's done and let's do this one. So I can see my black has all changed, it's all shiny, and now I'm going to change my clear. So I'm not sure that there's much of a difference. The good thing is, is that if you have one or the other, you know you can still use it. Now let's grab that fine tech. And with this one, I'm gonna do a background. So let's get mine a little wet. Ooh, lots of, lots of my other color. Bam, fixed. Some more water down. And wherever that embossing powder is, it's going to resist. water and a little water down there just to help it move.
Okay. And as it dries, the iridescence is going to come up. And once it's dry, I'm able to take a dry paper towel and pull off any that is on my embossing. It, Fine Tech is beautiful. Marabou is beautiful. I don't know which one I like more based off of all the things you can you can do with them. It just, it goes and it goes and it goes and it goes and it goes. You just have to let your imagination play. Here are the, here are the, the butterflies. Let's get the butterflies with a background. And let's do maybe this one. I can spray it and then pull that color and then anywhere I have my embossing is acting as a resist except for where I put my thumb in it. I can take it and kind of give it a wipe off. And then I can go in and I can paint. Only if I want to, I don't have to. But I'm painting with the metallics. Let's go that way off. I can go in and add my metallics and paint. It's up to you what you do. It really is. I could go in there and do the whole butterfly. Oop. Right on top. This is not, this is not, it's not really skill. <laughs> it's pretty. But you don't have to be a fine artist to, to make beautiful things. Any art you make, any card you make, any layout you make, anything you do is your art. And because the colors are so pigmented, they just lay down beautifully. It's hard to beat fine tech for, for watercolor metallics. It really is. 
I found out about them in Germany. I would have never, never, never known about them if I didn't go to Germany. Oh my gosh, okay, so, so many different options, so many different ways to use beautiful fine art type product without being a fine artist. Who would have ever, ever thought that simple stickers, basic stickers that are a buck 25 could do so much. There's no sticker there, it's completely flat. I could use the sticker for something else. That stamping could just, look at how pretty is this. It's all about giving yourself the opportunity to create. Look at what the marabou, as a mask and then as a stencil. Here's the leftovers. After I was done using it, I don't know, a million times. There's no sticker there. That was when I used it as a stencil. Here, no sticker there, no sticker there. Here we just colored them. Who would have ever thought that stamps and stickers with, with some very unique and interesting coloring opportunities could create? Look at the, look at the sheen and the shine on that, right? That is a wahoo ka -choo. Okay, we did a ton. And I think that there's something here for everybody. If you're on a budget, gosh, get one of those marabou packs and some stickers and go. Try it on 100 pound paper, thicker paper to see how well, it, it, if you can get it done. Chances are, as long as you don't add too much water, your paper is not gonna disintegrate. If you have a, 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 an unlimited budget, you just won $50. <gasps> what do you buy? Oh my gosh. I can't even tell you where to start. The fine tech is beautiful. The marabou is beautiful. The stamps, the stamps are gorgeous. You could have so, at $1.25, think about how many peel off stickers you could buy. Oh my gosh. Uh, the, the watercolor paper. Okay, let me tell you what we have on sale and then let me, let me show you samples. So on sale, well, on sale is stickers. We've got maybe, Four or five new border stickers in all the colors, and then we've got, I think, five new shapes. The, the feathers, and the butterflies, and the leaves, and the dragonflies. So these are all a buck, a buck 25, regardless of what color you get. They all come in gold, silver, black, and white. <laughs> and just remember, just because they start this way, does not mean they have to end this way. Oh no, uh-uh, no, 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 no. Use your Bic, your Sharpies, or Marabou uh, permanent markers, absolutely. Then I have watercolor paper for you. So I have got the Van Gogh black in the, in the postcard size, I've got the Van Gogh in the 12 sheet larger size. And then I've got the more inexpensive white that I was using all day today. So we've got that for you. Then I have got the most beautiful stamps ever. We've got the four butterflies that we're doing in an I Want It All bundle. And I wanna say they retail for like 350 each. And I wanna say on the I Want It All price, you get all four butterflies for around $10, maybe under $10. But that's the only way we're selling them is in the I Want It All bundle. And then I've got the three that I picked out as my favorites. They may not be your favorites, but they were my favorites. So these were the ones that we have on um, in the I Want It All bundle. But they have, there was a whole collection of them. There was this one from Woodware. And look at how cute is this from Woodware. 
And look at, look at how cute is that? From Woodware and the, look at how darling. Look at these, are they not so stinking cute? All from Woodware. So these are all on sale. Then we've got the Fine Tech. So I've got both palettes. Do, 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 do. Both palettes. The six pack is new to us. And I'm doing my very best. I mean, let's be honest. I can't compete with, with, with several large online retailers. I can't. And I'm not talking about Amazon. I'm talking about other scrapbooking retailers. I can't. We're small. We're not automated. I don't have the type of staff that they have. We just are not. We can't compete with some of the large, I mean, the fine art markets. I'm trying. I brought these to you at, I met the, I met almost the same price by maybe a dollar at some of the largest art stores so that, so that you could get them from if you want to shop there, absolutely, but at least we're trying to match the pricing. And, um, and that way, you know we're doing our best to, to keep crafting as affordable. You know, when, when, when a large online retailer buys 1,000 or 5,000 of these, they're going to get a much better price than, than we do when we buy 100 of them. But, but Talons has been awesome with me, and they've worked with me, and they understand what I'm trying to do and that I'm trying to bring beautiful product to paper crafters and bless them for understanding that and and working with me so same with all the manufacturers i mean they really do understand my plight about keeping crafting affordable and so beautiful product and and trying to match everybody else's prices you just have to remember we are gosh if you ever came to see us you would see just how small we are <laughs> really <laughs> But that makes us homie, and that we know your name when you walk in. <laughs> you don't walk in and go, hello, 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 hello. Is anyone out there, out there, out there? <laughs> so we have the four packs from Marabou, and Marabou Michael, same thing. He rocked it for us. If you do the I Want It All bundle, instead of $14.99 each, which would be $60, bucks, $34.99 gets you all the colors. And if you just want one pack, they're on sale for 20% off. But he absolutely rocked it out of the ballpark for us, and we appreciate it. So all of that on sale. I've got the Stampendous embossing powders in case you don't have them. There are six detailed embossing powders. We will have all six on sale. There is a, oh, just made a mess. There's a white and a clear and a gold and a copper the copper's stunning and a silver and a black so all from stampendous and gosh is that it i think that's it i think that's everything that's a lot so let me show you let me show you some of the samples the girls have made right i mean look at how beautiful as it dries it just gets better and who would have ever thunk <laughs> that makes my heart happy. I'm waiting to see what the SMS girls think. Uh-huh. What did you guys think? Uh-huh. Did you think? Did you, did you, did you guess what I was going to do? Because they never know exactly what I'm going to do. Okay. Samples. Ooh. So these are all done. These were done with the stamps. And see, that one's got glitter embossing powder. These were done with the stamps from Woodware. Look at the background on this one. Look, that was done. It's so Monet. Oh my gosh. It was, I think it was Monet. It's all done with the fine tech and just blotched. No, no real thought process. And then a sticker. No real thought process there, but stunning. OMG. And then look at this one. Look at the colors. That's done with the fine tech, done with the iridescence, and then the, the, the stickers just put right on top. Stunning. And with the marabou and the stickers. And this is from a Versus stamp set that we just did last week, I think. Yeah, last week. Done all with the marabou. Isn't that beautiful? And I love this one too. Look at how, look at the, can you see that iridescence? What a great guy card. Look at the iridescence on that. 
Ah, oh, what a great guy card. And the colors are, it's bling without being bling. It's, it's bling without being bling, 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 bling. It's bling. Oh, it's so pretty. And then with the marabou. Soft and sweet and elegant. And then with the fine tech. And then with the marabou. So these were fussy cut out. They were embossed with gold and then colored in. And you can even put the fine tech on top of the marabou. How pretty. Again, these were fussy cut out, but look at that fine tech. Yum, and then look at this one, same thing. I love the background and then the stamped image right on top of it. Talk about no fuss, no muss crafting. But who wouldn't love to get this card? And then the marabou with some fine tech added in. And here they've done the marabou. Renee did this one. Renee's new to us. Say hello, Renee. Everybody say hey to Renee. <laughs> SMS girl Renee. She just started and she took the border and then she cut off the top and the bottom and she just put them right there. Pretty smart, huh? No waste. Didn't she do a great job? So we all have to welcome Renee to the SMS team. Uh-huh, look at that stamp. And it was colored in with marabou. Stamped. Is that one colored? Yeah, and this one was colored in with fine tech. Marabou and then fine tech. Look at the colors. Ooh, I wish for fall. It's going to be 113 degrees here next week. Look at how pretty is it. And this is just literally swirling the, the fine tech into swirls. And then the beautiful feathers right on top and painted in with the fine tech. And look at this one with the, the drippies. Isn't the drippies great? That's putting down the fine tech and then spraying it and just letting it run. And then painting in with the fine tech. Love the drippies. And then here we have the three butterflies. How sweet is that? And then last but not least for cards. Done with the day, uh, the flowers. Okay, then I have, I have, well we had, we did. I mean, these are things that didn't even get to get used. Right, look at that. Ooh, we didn't even get to make anything out of it. Using the sticker, isn't that awesome? Using the sticker and marabou on black. These are things we didn't even get a chance to finish. I have layouts for you. So using the woodware stamp. So we stamped here, we stamped here and embossed, and here. And that's stamping with the fine tech. And then you've got a journal pocket right here. So let me back up just a little bit so I've got two layouts for you. Look at how pretty is that, right? And then look at this one. 
So you've got the sticker borders. You've got the stamped images from the woodware stamps. You've got the sticker and they've been painted in. This one's been painted in. That one's been painted in. You've got a border up here, a border right there. All done with the stickers. Look at that layout. Look at that. Is that a white one? Look at the beautiful. Aren't the colors gorgeous? Look at that. These three we did. These came with the paper, but those three we did. And when we say we, I mean Claire. All right. Oh, I'm done. I'm done. Oh, Mary Lynn Duncan. You can't call me on Thursdays. Not after six. I'm taping. <laughs> but the graduation picture did look beautiful. I looked at it really quick when I wanted to see who was calling me. All right, you guys. So where are you going to find all of this great product? The stickers you may only find with us because not a lot of people carry as many peel off stickers as we do. The woodware stamps, you can absolutely search those out. The fine tech, I've done my very best to meet and match everybody else's prices, even though we can't buy in the quantity that they buy in. And so we're, we're, we're gonna do our very best. The Marabou, well, I think I probably have the best price on the Marabou right now. They're a holy smoke artichoke price for the I Want It All bundle. But by all means, if you want to shop around, shop around. Absolutely do that. But keep it small. Do your best to, to stay with a small independent online company or even better, a small independent retailer that stocks the product right there in your store and is anxious to say hello to you. Okay, so it's me, Stacy. Scrapbooking Made Simple, Scrapbooking Made Simple, made the uh, dot com, Scrapbooking Made Simple dot com, YouTube class number 401. Congratulations to all of our winners of $50 gift cards. I will see you guys all tomorrow. No, not tomorrow. Next week. Next week. Bye, everybody. <laughs>